Alright, so I'm going to go over the nutrients and the one pesticide I use in the aquaponics system at the James Price of Latin America. The manual that you have covers this. The, the manual I wrote and both the manual I provided cover this. My manual is more specific to this project, but I wanted to give you a video and tell you because sometimes it's just easier to comprehend it when you see it and hear it. The first thing is this neem oil. This is an extract from a tree and the oil uh, can be applied foliarly. Actually, that's the only way we can apply it here because the, the neem, neem oil actually can hurt your fish. And so foliar applied, don't let it get in the water. Um, it has to contact the bug in order to kill it. You've got to, like, like with most pesticides, you've got to get the bugs while they're young, get it while they're first starting, get it, get it before it gets bad. Because if it gets bad, this is an organic product and it's not like a strong super weapon against the bugs, okay? But uh, you can read the label. Actually, read the label. You need to read the label. And, um, but I'll tell you about one tablespoon per bottle is, is about what I do, maybe a tablespoon and a half for a stronger mix. I fill the bottle up three-fourths, apply my neem, mix, 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 because it is an oil. The water and the oil don't mix that well, right? Mix, 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 take it off, fill this back up full to where it should be after the three-quarter mark, and then and then go apply fully early. It's got to contact the bug, so you got to get underneath the leaves and um, make sure you're touching those bugs. Something I have figured out is my plants that seem to be attacked often with the neem, I'm sorry, that seem to be attacked often with bugs that I've had to use the neem on has been kale and uh, cilantro. And so while the plants are small before there's a bug problem, I hit them with the neem about once a week or every two weeks. And uh, it seems to keep it all under control. The next is the iron. The iron I covered in another video, so I won't go into this, but as the plants need iron, the, the plants will tell you um, with, with, by their chlorosis. Assume your pH is right, so when you've got nitrates, you can probably assume that you need chelated iron. There's other video for that. Goes goes in depth. In uh, a healthy system, as, as, as you probably know, the pH trends down. And I'll actually show you. Let's see if you can see my notes here. I don't know if it's I don't know if it's focusing on there, but I'll tell you. On the second of May, I had a pH of six point six, and on the seventh, it's down to six point one. And actually, on the second, I added eight tablespoons of calcium. And which buffers my pH up, but it's already down to 6.1, which is, which is lower than I want it. Yeah, it's great the iron's available, but um, other nutrients aren't. So you've got to buffer it up. So, so the rule of thumb that I have learned from others is, well, you need three nutrients. You need iron, you need potassium and calcium supplemented into your system. For the most part, the other nutrients are covered, the micros and, and, and the other macronutrients are covered, but those three nutrients need supplemented. The iron we've covered, this is calcium, this is potassium, okay, I'll, I'll, I'll get into those. So with the calcium, uh, I, I have a large bag, I, it was like, I don't know, 100 pounds or 50 pounds, and it cost me like 10 bucks, and so I keep that at home in the cool shady area. And then I just fill this container as I need it. So let's say I'm going to add calcium. You can see in my previous notes how much I've added when the pH is what. But generally I'll add anywhere from 6 to 10 tablespoons depending on how low the pH is. So my pH is 6.1. Today I already added about 12 tablespoons of calcium because it's really low. Also I added more iron. Another part of my iron uh, I added in three stages, and the iron is acidic, so that, that drives your pH down as well. So, so I put in 12 tablespoons of the calcium. So let's say I want to do it. So I've got this blue uh, measuring cup. This is two tablespoons. I'll scoop it out. Top her off. 
I'll pour it into here. I've already done it, so, I, so I'm not gonna do it, but I'll pour it into this old laundry soap container. Then I'll take this and I'll fill it with water from the system. Shake it up, mix it up real good, and I'll show you where I, I enter it into the system. So over here, uh, media bed, far end of the media bed, you can see this um, pipe here where it inputs, and I've got a T in there, so that T will um, allow the water to come in from the side, but then I can manually add my nutrients right here. So I put the calcium and potassium right into here. The reason I do it there is because um, it's the furthest away from the fish tank uh, of, of a good access entry point to put my uh, calcium and potassium. Because that water has to run all through the media bed, all through the deep water culture beds, and then finally, at the end of those three long deep water culture beds, it gets put into the um, it gets pumped back into the fish tank. Let's get this set back up where we were. So that's the calcium, okay? So the rule that, I, that I've learned with, the, with the calcium and potassium, which buffers your pH up, is every three times you use calcium and on the fourth you use potassium. With the potassium, it's all the same principles I, I, I apply to the, to the calcium. So, if it's my third time, which tomorrow will be, I'll take my scoops of potassium. I'll take, oh, um, eight tablespoons or so, depending on where my pH is at. Do the same process. Put the potassium in here, fill it with water, mix it, enter it in down there. I usually do two scoops per bottle, which is four tablespoons, so it's not too heavily concentrated going in at once. So I'll do four, four, eight, and then maybe one or two more, just depending. So, you may not be able to see this, but I'll explain. Here's my uh, documentation where I, I document the pH every day. Ammonia and nitrate, oh, I'm sorry, ammonia and nitrate, I only do maybe once a week or if there's a problem in the system I'll, I'll test for the ammonia and the nitrate nitrite i'm sorry but I, I test for ph and nitrate usually every day ph every day nitrate oh every other day or every day just depends uh and then i also have notes for the total dissolved solids i've got a meter over there not real important but i like to monitor just because i like to know what's you know just what's going on and then I've got water temperature, air temperature. I don't take note of that real often, but every once in a while it's good to know. Then I have notes for um, how much of what additive I put in. Whether it's the calcium, potassium, the iron, fish food. Um, but I want to talk about the foliar spray. So I didn't show you this. This is the potassium. The same potassium that I used to buffer the system up. This, this is the bag, okay? And I'll read you the composition. It is 20% phosphorus, 55% potassium, 0.075% magnesium, 0.04% sulfur. Okay? This is the closest form of potassium, powdered potassium that will work for a system that I can find, and it works. So, um, I use the potassium as a foliar spray to handle powdery mildew. And so uh, let me show you kind of what I've been working on. Over here I've got some cucumber. Actually, I'm not sure what they are. I thought they were cucumber, but look at that. I don't know what that is. So um, it, I don't know if you can see in the video, but you can see maybe the powdery mildew that is on these leaves. And if you look down here, those leaves are kind of burned. You see the burn in those leaves? Well, that burn is from me spraying too much potassium. See over here? And you see all that powdery mildew. So, of course with squash plants, 
powdery mild is an issue, but uh, especially in aquaponics, and especially as it heats up because there's so much evaporation, there's so much transpiration of the plants, so much humidity. And the, um, the powdery mildew thrives off of humidity, and the key is acidic environment. So, what's to do with the potassium is if you spray it, the potassium is, a, is alkaline, and so it raises the pH of the surface of the leaf, okay? And so that is to prevent the powdery mildew to grow. So how I burned it, I took my sprayer and I did two spoons, two, two blue spoons full. So I did four tablespoons in the sprayer of this. The next time, since I burned it, the next time I used a half, a, a half of a blue one, so one tablespoon. And um, it didn't really seem to control it like it did the first time. First time it did great, but it burned my leaves. And so uh, now I've got some suffering burned leaves, but the, the powdered mildew is coming back. And that was with half. So, so now I'm going to try one scoop full, which would be two tablespoons per um, 1,500 milliliters or 55 ounces. Is usually what I fill it up to. It's, it's, about, um, it's about a half gallon, right? So per half gallon. So what I think is going to be the, the key to your own test is um, one tablespoon, I'm sorry, two tablespoons of, the, of my potassium per half gallon of this. So that, um, that is the nutrients. I don't have any way to measure the calcium or potassium in the water other than looking at the plants. Uh, your plants will tell you what you need. There's all sorts of charts about um, what the leaves are showing you as far as deficiencies. And um, I used to study that a whole lot and I just kind of have gotten to a point where if the plants look green and healthy, I know I'm doing good. And if they don't, I know I need to add uh, calcium or potassium or iron. And it seems to be one of those three. So without going real in depth on that, but that is the nutrients and one pesticide that I use here at the project.